Hello everybody out there in YouTube land. Today I'm going to be showing you how to replace or install a circulation pump on an outdoor wood boiler. This is an ECM pump so it's way more efficient. It's supposed to use like 14, 15 watts whereas the old Takeo 007 I believe used two or three hundred watts so there should be a big savings in electricity from the research I did it'll save about 30 or 40 dollars a year just in electricity for that one pump uh, for the heating season because electricity is up expensive up out here in the middle of nowhere so it'll pay for itself in a few years and then I'll be able to keep this pump around so we'll have a spare in case anything happens so, disclaimer, don't do any of this stuff. If you don't know what you're doing, it will hurt you or kill you. We're going to be working with electricity. I already have the power shut off. We're going to be working with hot water. This water is 180 degrees in here. It will burn you. So be very, very careful. So what we're going to do to start is we're going to shut off the valve here. And in theory, that'll shut off the water coming out. I'm going to shut off the bottom one here so there's no nothing, no gravity pushing it back up. And when we cut the, for this particular one, they must have not been able to find the right kind of flange because it goes from one inch to three fourths here. I'm going to be changing that and I'm going to change it to a, uh, sorry change it all to one inch so I have another flange to do as well down there and a little bit of one inch pex. So what I'm going to do to start now that I got everything off is I'm going to make sure that this is unplugged just to be sure again and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to undo or I'm going to loosen up these two bolts right here or screws so that we have the power disconnected. And then I'm gonna put a little hole in the pipe here so a little bit of the water will kind of drain out to the side. At least that's the idea. So I'll be right back. All right, I've loosened up those two screws. And then there was another screw here that you take off and that'll get you to the electricals. Electric. So here's your wire nuts. You're gonna wanna disconnect these. everything here. I believe with the new pump there isn't a ground because it's an ECM motor, DCM, and it's uh, insulated from what I read in the instructions, but we'll get to that when we rewire it back up to this cord. So I'm going to get this all disconnected so that when we take it off here and get the flanges disconnected we'll be able to just pull it right out. So I'm going to pause the video, get all these wires disconnected, and I'll be back. All right, we're back. So I got the wires all disconnected. We're going to want to take this out so we can reuse it in the new pump. So it will hold the cord in. So you just unscrew it from the back here. All right, and then we have that. So next what I'm going to do is put a little hole in the pipe here to let the water drain out and the pressure. I do have the valve shut off but you do want to make sure. Be very very careful this water is hot. I can't stress that enough so you got to be very careful. Remember if you're not comfortable do not do this. Alright I'm gonna get that done and then I'll be right back. Alright I'm back so I got the pipe cut all the water drained out. So next, what I'm gonna do is take off these two top bolts to get this off, and we'll be able to just take this whole thing off. Bloop. And then we'll get to the new one. So I'm gonna get these two bolts loosened up, and then I'll come back and I'll show you when I pull it out. All right, I'm back, so I have them loosened up. 
way the flange is, it slides out from the side on the pump. So all I have to do is take off one, one bolt and it'll slide right off. Yeah, there's some nasty buildup in that thing. And the rubber gasket wasn't doing too good. So we'll get this cleaned up and then we'll store it for future use in case anything happens. When we first moved here I did add in a new anode rod. There were, the one that was in there was just gone and chemicals. So this is probably from before. I'm hoping the water isn't that bad and did it recently. So, alright, we'll get the new pump out and move it on up here. As you can see, the electric motor is a little bit littler, new technology, all that fancy stuff. So that's the Taiko 007, this is the Taiko 007E ECM High Efficiency Circulator. So I am going to get a new rubber gasket and then I have a little bit of red high heat gasket maker I'm going to put in there as well. And I'll get this top part all done up, and then we'll switch to moving to doing the rest of it. So, I'll be right back. Alright, before I put this up there, I thought I'd show you quick here what I meant. They come with a new rubber gasket that you put right there. And on the flange, up there, there's a spot that it slides into. Oh no, they're flat. And then it kind of pushes it down and keeps it sealed. I'm going to put some gasket maker around the outside here as well. So I just thought I'd show you what that looks like. So I'm going to get that done and put up there and then I'll be right back. Alright, so we have that all done up. When you tighten it, make sure you tighten it up kind of a little bit at a time. One side and then the other so it doesn't, you know, go at an angle when you tighten it. So it's flat. So next, we're gonna hook up the next part of the piping. So we want it to be one inch to one inch. So I got another flange and a one inch thing. So we're gonna put in the pecs here. So I gotta measure out the piece and then I'll show you how we clamp it and go from there. All right. So I have that flange all in and tightened up. So I have another piece of PEX. So we will slip it on here. Make sure you don't forget to put on your two slip rings here, clamp rings. Otherwise, that could be a little bit of a pain in the butt. Actually, you need three. Two there and then one up on the top. And then you'll slide in your connector piece. Make sure it's in all the way. And then you'll connect it up here. And I'm gonna get that all done and then I will be right back. All right, I got it all connected up. So next we're gonna take our crimper tool and crimp a ring up here. And then one on each side of that. So what the crimper tool does is there's a thing here and it squeezes it together, this part right here, and then it makes it tight. So I'm going to get those all crimped and I'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Alright, so I've got them crimped, it's on tight, so next we'll go to doing the electrical. There's a Phillips screwdriver here, or screw in the front that you gotta take off and that will open up this little box and then we can wire in the cord. So I'm gonna get that removed and I'll be right back. All right, so I have that removed. Everything is plastic and it is um, an insulated pump, so there is no ground. So, what we're going to use is that knockout thing that we pulled out from the other one. We're going to remove the back here. 
and we'll screw it in so it's nice and tight. That way it'll hold the power cord in so if anything happens it won't rip it out. So I'm going to get that screwed in and the old power cord up in here and then we'll go from there. Alright, I'm back. So we have it up in there. So we're going to want to adjust it and then we'll tighten this down when we're done to make sure it's tight enough so it doesn't undo the connection. To secure these, I'm going to use some Wago wire nuts just because I like them a little bit better than the screw-on ones because they kind of lock a little better and I like that. So we're going to connect the white to the white and the black to the black. And there is no ground, so I'm just going to put a wire nut on the end of that and kind of just have it in there for right now. So, we'll get this connected, and I'll be right back. Alright, I have the Wago wire nuts in there and secure. You put one wire in each side, and it has a little snap, and then it snaps down, so it's in there. And then... There's no chance of it really kind of hitting anything. And one thing that's really cool, if you need to test anything, they have a little opening, and you can stick a probe in there to see without having to break it or take it apart and test each wire. So I got that all hooked up. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the water and let that go through kind of and pressurize just from the gravity of it it does fill up it comes out of down here and then it will push it back up to almost all the way to the top here so i'm going to let that happen and then we'll plug it in and see what if it works and if it does then we'll put the box back on here and i'm going to use some more of this gasket maker up on this top part here just to keep water out better and a little down here on the bottom so, I'm going to get that opened up, and I'll be right back. Alright, I opened it up. I don't know if you can hear that on the camera, but it's bubbling. All the water going. So far, no leaks, so that's wonderful. So, We'll go plug it in and I'll come back over here. It's supposed to go through uh, orange and then a couple light sequences and then turn green. So I'm going to plug it in and I'll run back over here and we'll come back and see what happens. Alright, we are back. So we have the orange light, the startup sequence. I think you can kind of hear it. What it'll do is it'll purge... It has a startup sequence and it'll purge out all the water, all the air and everything. And then it will, I think it has five minutes, ten minutes. I don't know, I forgot, I gotta read the thing. So I'll have a video and a review about the whole pump in a few months or in a month or two once I had a good time to know how it worked. So, but the electrics work, everything's working, so we're going to go unplug it so we don't electrocute ourselves when we're closing this all up. And we're going to get this all tightened up, and then I'll be right back. Alright, I'm back. So we're all done. Make sure you ever have everything nice and tightened up. It's always a good idea to come and put a little Loctite on these bolts, because if you feel it... It has like a slight vibration constantly, so you just don't want stuff to loosen up. And then I'm going to come back tomorrow and tighten them up again just to make sure because these are brand new rubber gaskets that kind of settle overnight with the heat and stuff. Just to make sure everything's tight. So that is how you install or replace a new circulator pump on an outdoor wood boiler. This one is an ECM high efficiency circulator, so if you want to replace yours with one of these to save money, it's always good to be more efficient on the homestead. In the comments below, let me know if you guys have any questions. Hit that like button and subscribe. It helps us out. I'll see you guys later.